I'm cold. Would you let me stay here for tonight? I know who you are. You're Jean Valjean. It's been almost 30 years since Les Miserables first took to the stage to become a worldwide theatrical sensation. Over the decades, many film adaptations have been proposed, but they've never gotten off the ground. And the reason is that the producers were simply waiting for the right technology to record oh actors God. singing on set. The other alternative is to lip sync your entire performance, which means you have to record something, however good it is. You make choices maybe three months before you're on set without having even met any of the other actors. So then you have to match that. So a lot of your energy goes into matching a performance you may not even like anymore. Can I condemn this man to slavery? Pretend I do not feel his agony. This innocent who bears my peace, who goes to judgment in my place, who am I? I couldn't bear the thought of doing a musical lip syncing to playback. I mean, it's a, you know, you spend your life worrying about trying to make it look like it's in sync. Uh, and even in the great musicals, there's something false or artificial about lip syncing, which, you know, you forgive as an audience and you try to forgive. But I didn't want audiences to forgive poor lip syncing in Les Miserables. I wanted there to be nothing between the audience and these wonderful characters. Uh, but on top of that, if you do it live, and I'm not talking about just live singing, I'm also talking about live accompaniments. There's a, there was an electric piano playing live as well. It, it, it gives the power back to the actors. So if, you know, if, if Hugh Jackman needs to take a moment uh, to, to have a new thought or, or an emotion, you can see it form in his eyes, and then he can sing about it. He can take that moment for the emotion to form. My soul belongs to God, I know. I made that bargain long ago. He gave me hope when hope was gone. He gave me strength to journey on. Who am I? So I've heard you describe the movie musical as the Mount Everest of movie making. Why is it the Mount Everest of movie making? There are literally so many things that can go wrong with any movie, but the list in a musical is just that much higher. Uh, and unfortunately, when a musical is not good, it's the worst thing on the planet to endure. So it, it could be one song, it could be one person in the musical. You know, often some movies are really watchable, even if you're like, eh, the story, but I enjoyed it. With a musical, unless it all works, it's horrible. I understand originally there was a lot of dialogue in the film mm. that you took out uh, and the production took out. Why? Why take out the spoken dialogue? Oh, very good question because, you know, the very first draft that Bill Nicholson wrote, he divided it into dialogue interspersed with songs. And by doing that, he'd followed the pattern laid down by almost every movie musical. I mean, there are only two sung through movie musicals in history. One is Tommy and one is Evita. But the problem when you do that is you have these constant gear changes you know, where we're talking and suddenly I start singing to you and you wonder why the, no, you know, why now? <laughs> so I was about to say the wrong word. Um, uh, uh, and and I, I, I thought those gear changes are tricky. And I remember I, I went to see Baz Luhrmann and asked him for advice. And Baz said, well, unless you, you can make a contract with the audience that allows, that gives you permission to transition from dialogue into song, it's very tricky. And I, I didn't feel in Les Miserables there was an, there was an obvious device. And, and I felt in the end it was more honest to say, I'm creating an, an alternative universe, where it, which is like our own, but where people communicate through song. Um, and, and just to be brave about it and to own it and to say, this is our world. And actually, I've discovered in doing that, the audience settle into it within minutes. I mean, you don't, you don't find yourself you know, having these uncomfortable gear changes where you go from one, the medium of speaking to the medium of singing. So, you know, the central challenge of directing a musical is how to make this alternative reality convincing. And I was, and I felt that doing it live and doing it sung through uh, would, 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 would create a more convincing reality for the audience. The other thing that strikes you about the film is just how raw it mm. is. It's, it's not just raw emotions, but it's, it's got a very gritty feeling to it. Mm. It doesn't have a, a lot of those you know, big, shiny song and dance mm. scenes that I think people commonly associate mm. with musicals. Why did you decide to go in that direction? Well, I mean, you know, we, Victor Hugo, 150 years ago, wrote this book, furious at the kind of level of poverty he saw around himself. Sadly, 150 years later, we still have you know, unacceptable levels of poverty around the world. We still have great anger about rising economic inequality and social inequity. We have revolutions in the Middle East. 
um, th th there's, a, there's a topicality to the, to the underlying themes of this work and I, and I wanted to, to, to bring out that topicality by getting the look and feel of the poverty and the suffering, you know, make it, make it real and not make it like some kind of safe Christmas Dickens TV show. <laughs> I, I, want it, I want it to be quite visceral so that you're reminded that these problems were then but they're still here. And whilst Les Mis is in serious Oscar contention, Jackman, who once even hosted the Oscars, insists that he doesn't have his heart set on winning gold. If it gets that kind of attention, you know, for the movie, it's fantastic. If you were to win, what would it mean for you personally? If I was to win, oh, if yeah. you were to win. I, mean, I can't even have that conversation. No? It's you just keep it out of the back of your head. Yeah, which probably gives you an insight of what it would mean. Okay, fair <laughs> but enough. But mostly, honestly, I'll tell you, people ask me about it and I say, look, I'm really grateful to be in this film. I know how rare these films are to be made. It's the role, certainly of my lifetime so far, that I've ever been given. It's like a Hamlet. I'm really sort of, I don't ever want to think if that doesn't happen, disappointed. You know what I mean? Because I've been there with audiences that moves people and I... I the role enough. is its own reward, I guess? Completely. And, and to sit there with an audience to see how it moves them, that's, that's really, that's the holy grail. So different now from what 